When the run is complete, this report will appear. You can see there's my beautiful sharp peak. I'm almost certain that's salicylic acid. This is, this is odd out here. This is some other molecule that's coming out very late in the gradient. And um, that's some contamination there. The full report includes the original chromatogram, a graph of the solvent gradient. Started at 50% acetonitrile, ramped up to 100% and stayed there for a minute. If I scroll down, I get a peak report. So the peak that is, I believe, salicylic acid is coming out at 1.657 minutes and uh, has this percent area. There will be another page here, a second page, that shows this was the contamination here coming out late in the gradient and it's actually a large area. It's that broad peak there. I can save this data by printing a PDF. This is highly recommended. Uh, you see here the sample info is really important because that's where I typed in what is this and if you don't have that it's hard to know what am I looking at. Uh, but now I can print a PDF. Should come up with this ChemStation PDF here on the bottom and if I click Save As, uh, in this case this is coming up as Zach, Marcus, Tim and Tessa's folder and it's in the Dropbox so I can say Give it a good title, Salicylic Acid Control, using the esters method. Doom. There we go. And if I save that, then the PDF will be there, which anybody can access from anywhere. There we go. After I've saved this, I can just close it out. And uh, I can stop the pump now. gets all quiet. If I'm the last person using the machine, I should also turn off the UV lamp. The UV lamp has a life of about a thousand hours and costs about a thousand dollars. So every hour it's on is, is a dollar. So if I don't need it, then I should turn it off. To turn it off, I can either just click this button or I can do a right click. Before I leave the machine, I pick up the trash. If I'm done with this sample, I can throw it away. 50 star goes back in its little container over here. The syringe is here. The loop has been flushed. It's clean for the next person. Our solvent bottles are up here on top of the HPLC. Take a look at the level here. If this runs dry, that's bad. So when it's getting low, you should tell me. Uh, this is the acetonitrile. This is the water. Uh, the water is shielded because algae can grow if it's exposed to sun. This part of the HPLC is a pump. It draws from the two solvent bottles up top, mixes them here, sends them on through this little capillary tube here to the injection loop. From the injection loop, the solvent mixture, which may be carrying sample, goes into this column here. So this is called a C18 column. It's a hydrophobic column. 18 carbon groups are hanging off the silica there. And so this will retain molecules for different amounts of time. After they come out of the column, they go into a UV detector. Down here is the UV detector. After they are measured by the UV detector, they go into the waste jar on the floor. Normally the guts are covered up so all you can see is the injection port. That's all you really need to worry about. The on switch if you need it to turn it on if you're the first person in uh, is under here. 